you guys will join me in praying. Uh, Father, we just thank you for this evening. We thank you for our counsel. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity to listen and to be heard. Uh, pray you be with these men and women as they listen and consider and make decisions that affect the community we live in. Uh, just be with them. I know they have families and businesses and interests outside of this room. And so uh, as they just set those aside and serve our community, I pray you protect and bless them uh, and be in their homes, especially as we approach these holidays. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Steve, leads to the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. don't believe we have any amendments to the agenda tonight, so we will move on to the consent calendar. Mr. Mayor, I'd move for approval of the consent calendar, which includes uh, item four, setting a, a public hearing for December 15, 2015, for A415, Kerr Properties LLC zoning in conjunction with annexation county agricultural suburban commercial to city R8C17. Also, number five, resolution number 15-065, approval of a request for destruction of temporary administration and mayor's office records, and approval of, of a professional services agreement with Longwell Trap for architectural services for fire station number four. Both of those approved by, are recommended by Public Works and the other items as listed. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Just one note. Um, I wanted to just bring up there was in the meeting, the meeting um, I had mentioned something about dates and I got an email from Mr. Gridley about um, that they weren't going to change some contract dates that they said that they were going to talk to Longwell Trap about changing. And um, I just want to clarify the reason I did that is because I was concerned about the agreement if it went back to the June date that it might um, not be long enough for 18 months. But it looks like it will be if they're can get the whole construction finished by next December. So I just want to clarify, I got an email and that wasn't included in the notes. And that's okay. all. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Roll call, please. Miller? Yes. McEvers? Yes. Gookin? Yes. Adams? Yes. Edinger? Yes. Motion carried. Now is the time for public comments. Anyone wishing to come up and speak to the council? For three minutes on city business is welcome to do so at this time. Okay, don't see anyone for public comment. Announcements. Any member of the council have announcements? It's a very quiet group here tonight. Would you like me to say something? No, I would <laughs> We'll just pass over that. So we will move on to public works approval of 2015 snow plan. Tim Martin, our street superintendent. Thank you, Mayor, Council Members. Um, this I was going to bring to you a couple weeks ago when we had the uh, windstorm and canceled it, so I'm going to bring it to you tonight. I um, want to talk before I get into that a uh, little bit of the leaf fast windstorm and uh, where we are today with that. And I know. Um, your fire and police chief are going to bring you a full report here in a couple weeks, I believe it is. But just an update that we have completed leaf pickup this year. Um, all the areas have been picked up. We're a little bit behind in the sweepers, as I sent you heads up earlier, uh, because of the snowstorm and as cold as it is, those sweepers will get get those leaves frozen in there and, and they just won't pick up. So we're hoping next week as things warm up, we're going to see some rain in the lower elevations and we're going to get back out with the sweepers. Uh, this year, we took our leaves up into the Cherry Hill area uh, above the sledding hill there. There, we're composting them, and our goal is in four or five years to be able to use that soil along the, the bike and walking path trails, you know, to help that um, 
that ground there, you know, along the railroad tracks where it's, you know, give it a little boost of nitrogen and, and have some green space through there. This year we hauled 795 loads of leaves off the streets. If you figure that just conservatively each dump truck is 3,000 pounds weight of leaves in it, that's, you know, 21 tons, or I mean three tons, 6,000 pounds apiece. That's 21 tons of leaves that we conservatively hauled off the streets. We were participating in this along with the windstorm. Uh, we got great partnerships among all the departments in the city. We got help from fire. They brought us some manpower to help cut the tree limbs, cut the trees so we could haul them. Parks Department was involved helping us limb trees and run, run the saws with our crews along with Water Department it gave us manpower plus they've got their two dump trucks that helped us get this stuff off the streets as soon as we could and wastewater also loaned us loaders to help so it was truly a pretty big event I don't have the total figures but I can tell you it's over a hundred and thirty trees that we that we help pick up and get off the streets in Coeur d'Alene uh, that's also in the right-of-ways in the alleys we cleared those to our knowledge every road in town is now cleared and we've been out since last week starting to pick up limbs and, and things just, that are just blown all over town. So that's kind of where we are with Leaf Fest and the windstorm. Again, we hope next week to get out with the sweepers and continue sweeping in the areas that have not seen us yet. Tonight I'm going to bring you my draft 2015-2016 snow plan, kind of the highlights of the plan. If it is adopted tonight, we will get it up on the website and uh, make sure everything's out there for everybody to look at. But some of the highlights is snow is an emergency situation. You know, we're going to start plowing. We're very aggressive on our arterials. We see up to one to three inches. We're going to start moving on our arterials. Our goal is to keep them as free from ice as we can. We, we do it by priorities. We want to keep the hospital, you know, the major arterials and the hills, the 911 center. And then we look into the residential areas. We do plow the residentials and the cul-de-sacs at the same time. Sorry, my voice is like coming and going. I've been fighting a cold here for a week or so. So one of the key highlights to this, this uh, snow plan is you'll see for many years now, we've been at 38 hours. Our goal this year is 30 hours completion of storms. Um, bare pavement, you know, it's not a, most times it's not an achievable goal. We're not going to tell you we're going to have bare pavement all over town. But our goal is, is to make all roads passable. And we'll get out with our de-icers and or sand to make that happen. We do not plow alleys. And uh, we also, at this point, I'd like to mention that we do have two sledding hills that are on our streets. One is at Boyd Avenue between 9th and 10th, and the other one is Lost between Dollar and 14th, 15th, down in the south of Sherman area. We encourage our residents to keep the cars off the street if you know we're out there. 
It, it makes our job easier, but we will, we maintain it all winter. I mean, if, if you can get your car moved after we've been through there, chances are we're going to be back and push it open. You know, we, we treat winter as, as an everyday occurrence throughout the year, you know, through the months, and we'll be there. And the residents must also clear their own sidewalks. Some of the other highlights is we build strong relationships with the media. I mean, I think getting the word out through any media aspect, whether it's local 19, Trim 2, KHQ, we're going to let everybody know what we're up to. Again, if the draft is adopted tonight, we'll have pamphlets throughout town at the library, city hall, police and fire stations for people to look at. Um, we do keep our snow line current and we will update our website as we fight each storm. One of the key things for us is process improvement and operator critiques. I mean, we critique each snowstorm. How could we have done it different? What would make us better? And that is one of the keys to that department. And with that, you're going to see this slide where over the years since 2000, our hours were at 50 and we had less than 250 lane miles. We're up over 350 just in residential streets alone and our hours keep creeping down. How does that happen? Uh, a couple things make that happen. One is the reorganization that we brought to you this year is making that happen. Working internally with finance and other departments, we were able to grow some to make things happen. And we've, we've put on an, an additional crew on nights through that reorganization. And another key piece of what it makes it work is that right there, those loader gates and loaders. Um, they're much more maneuverable. They can get in and out of cul-de-sacs quicker. And it, it has just made our snow team that much more effective. Kind of some of the numbers. You know, we, we base our budget on an average, you know, and that average is over the last 10 years is about seven citywide plows. And if we're not plowing the citywide, it's usually about 11 arterial plows. In that process, you can see we do almost 65,000 times that we use those gates doing driveways and intersections and things like that. Again, the number of lane miles, our goal again is now 30 hours, not 38. And, you know, it, it's a pretty impressive team. I've talked to many of my peers throughout the country. You know, they ask us, how do we do this? How does it get done? I can't believe it, you know, and, and it is the crew. It's the men and women that are in those machines and what they like to do. You know, some winter tips for people. You know, again, try to keep the cars off the roads when we're plowing. Clear your sidewalks and more than anything is help, help your neighbors who need help, you know, and anticipate when snowstorms come, it, it is going to be more challenging. I mean, it, it, it's just inevitable that, you know, that first commute in the mornings and getting home, you know, slow down, be ready to go. So what's winter going to bring us this year? I think, you know, we lost our in-house meteorologist that used to keep us all involved in winter. But I think this one's a pretty easy one in which everybody is saying 
You know, it's supposed to be drier and it's supposed to be warmer on average. And I think, you know, what we're seeing out there is that we've got a pretty strong El Nino and most of the potent storms are going to go south. And uh, I know, big frown. <laughs> but the mountains will get it, council member. The skiers are frowning. Ski, <laughs> skiing and snow machining will be there. One of the fun things we do, um, every year we go to the fourth grade schools, elementaries in town this year. You know, was Isabella Walker from Bora was one of the winners. We do this, but well, we do it every three years, and we collect data. That's how we know how many times what we need to do to improve. This year, the theme is bands. So our first storm is going to be ACDC, and right on down to the Goo Goo Dolls. So anything over seven, I'll be making names up. But that's what we are this year. So with that, I'd entertain any questions you have. And um, I'll start. Yeah. Do you listen to a lot of the Goo Goo Dolls? <laughs> Do not know who the Goo Goo Dolls Don't know are. that one. Okay. I know the on. foreigner, oh, you know, okay. and... Deaf Leopard, but I do not know the questions. Dolls. Questions for Tim. Dan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, Tim, um, so say we don't get a lot of snow. You have budgeted, I assume, for a typical winter. Uh, what do we do with the crews when there's not a lot of snow? What are they going to be doing? We're going to be out there. We, you know, in years past, we'll, we'll start like our tree trimming program up again, partner with um, Parks Department and get out in some of these neighborhoods and trim back along the roads there in the city right away. You know, that helps everyone, plus it allows us to get in there with our equipment and our sweepers to get along there. That's one thing. Um, we are going to shortly here begin the work up on the Tubbs Hill, the fire access road. You know, we anticipate that going very quickly. Just because we're not don't get a lot of snow, we're still going to be fighting ice and black ice in mornings. We're going to be out there de-icing and uh, continue to do some of that stuff. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions for Tim? Steve. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Tim, with this additional night crew, is there going to be a specific focus for what they're going to tackle? Yes. Um, just to give you a little bit of history, you know, I can go back as early as 15 years ago when I was a full-time heavy equipment operator and plowing nights, we had two teams and we were able to plow the whole north end in a night. Now it takes three teams and now a fourth team to split that area to get it done in a 12-hour shift. Most of the growth has been all to the north, you know, up in the landings and Hawk's Nest. And, and that crew is going to concentrate there. We've divided that so we can get into these areas and, and not have to trickle over into the next day finishing them up. All right, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions for Tim? Ron. Yeah, uh, Tim, uh, you know, you showed us uh, uh, up there on the slide that uh, people are supposed to uh, move their cars uh, when they see the plow coming or something like that and also clean their si their own sidewalks. But uh, don't we have a policy uh, that uh, on uh, removing cars, I mean... Uh, can't the police department ticket if the car, say, sits there through one plow? We, we do have an ordinance that I believe they can only sit and rest in one place for 24 hours. I recognize, and I think council and everybody recognizes, that some of the older parts of town just do not have driveways. 
their parking is, you know, on street, or some have to get into those alleys to be able to park. And, and we and we're going to encourage you, you know. And what I could say is, is if you can think and look back, you know, whether you're watching TV right now or. Most times, those plows are going to be within 45 minutes of every time you're going to see them go by your house. I mean, if you're used to seeing them, Council Member McEvers, at 8.30 in the morning, there's a good chance you're going to see them between 74, 7.45 and 9. So, you know, just be aware of that. And usually we've got the grader out front, and he may be... 10 to 15 minutes ahead of the the loader so it'll give you an opportunity to get out there and move your vehicles for us but there is an ordinance and we work with PD very closely especially in high hazardous areas you know if you've left your boat on the street all fall and going into winter and it's close to a stop sign we're going to we're going to be more aggressive with those vehicles to get them out of our way. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions for Tim? Thank you very much, Tim. So we were looking for a motion to approve. So move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank, Thank you. you I'm going to take about five more minutes. I'll be really quick. Um, <laughs> Kind of want to do a department now overview of who who your streets department is and things that we work on and you know we're everything we're we're maintenance we're going to do the sweeping we do the pavement markings we do you know the signal system maintenance the drainage leaf pickup special projects and all those things and. You know, here's kind of the organizational chart in which we work by. You know, policy and direction come from you. You know, that's how we operate. The leadership comes from the core and the guidance of the department, and then the results happen out there with the people on the streets. You know, that's kind of who we are and how we work. Here's a slide that I really like, and, you know, I, I picked this up. I challenged our finance director to help me with this. And, but if you've seen this, if you have a $190,000 home in the city of Coeur d'Alene, your city tax is five hundred nine fifty four a year. The department out of the general fund represents 7.2 percent of the overall general fund budget which represents thirty six dollars and sixty nine cents a year or three dollars a month is what you pay taxes to support that street department and the things we do and again you know here it's kind of the maintenance that lies out there. I mean, every year we're getting more bike paths, more things that we maintain, you know, right on down the road. And uh, just wanted to do something real brief so you kind of knew who the department was. And I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to serve the city of Coeur d'Alene and its citizens. And... This is a pretty light moment photo. This was taken last week, and crews were anxious to head to Thanksgiving, so it's pretty quick. But again, thank you. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate it. Tim. Okay, we will move to uh, resolution number 15 066 approval of a professional service agreement with Welsh Coleman and Associates for Mullen Road and Park Drive design, build, and construction phase services. And we have Gordon going to give us a staff report. Thank you, Mayor. Members of the Council, I'm going to pull up some graphics here. That one, and we'll do this one, and we'll make 
this, uh oh, this go away, make this go away. Dude, can I come over here? Yeah, there, that's even better. Alrighty, so uh, in September, I believe you, uh, the concept for Mullen Road um, came before you and was approved. So since then, we are moving forward with construction and getting it built. The goal is to have it built next year. So the first order of business to get the design contract underway. So that's what the uh, the item for you today is. Um, we were have successfully partnered with Ignite. To, uh, they are funding $1.6 million of a $2 million project, which I will outline for you here in a minute. City has about has the remaining $400,000 in. Uh, there was a hundred. I'm sorry, a million dollars was in the budget that you approved. So the additional money would come forward as a budget amendment, because uh, between, I guess it would be April when we conceived this project, and right now it's grown significantly. Obviously, doubled. We've added parking and some other features uh, that, again, was funded by Ignite. So that's kind of the financing and how we're moving forward, funding-wise, in a nutshell. So what I'd like to do is, this is uh, point out what this project will entail. This is the original concept, the one we're moving forward on, and I will show you in another slide the specific project, but I wanted to point out um, a couple of areas here. Uh, you might remember some, uh, the item of carousel lease came before you. So specifically, this memorial plaza area because that carousel is not ready to be built right now, the project won't be building anything inside of an area outlined around the carousel. That will just be in grass at this point. Should the carousel people start to build um, while this project is ongoing, we might have an opportunity to come back and uh, funding permitting to build some of this infrastructure around the carousel. But at this point, um, that hasn't happened, so we're moving forward, just planting this in grass. This area here, the remaining Memorial Plaza, is in the project and will be built. So we'll have trees and uh, accent pavements and things like that. There's a gateway feature right here that is not going to be a part of this project. Uh, and really because of um, really just not, not enough funds. Uh, the Centennial Trail won't be part of this project. Uh, so now let me show you what will be part of this project. Uh, let's go over here. Oopsies. Okay, so everything here in pink will be encompassed by the project. The majority of it is the roadway, the realignment of Mullen Avenue, uh, realignment of park, this additional parking area up here, the Memorial Plaza, this is the area I was referring to that would be grass, uh, this area around the Human Rights Building will reconstruct this parking area, tie it into the museum parking, eliminate a, one of the access right there, line it up with the parking lot across the street, and then some um, paths and whatnot in the city park itself. So that's pretty much it. The, the design contract in front of you today includes design as, all, as well as construction administration. Uh, so it, it will carry through the whole project um, and takes into account all of these features for design. All captured. Okay. Questions for Gordon? I think Public Works has seen this a couple of times. We saw it a couple of times. <laughs> given the report, the salmon map is the salmon what map. we see is the final salmon map. So that was um, no, Gordon. That was great to bring this back, and I think you all read the um, Public Works minutes. I, I think it was really important to clarify these maps because there was a lot of public input. And um, I wanted to make sure as we went through this that it didn't appear that we were taking things out of what was originally 
um, proposed that what we're actually doing is being real clear with what and who is paying for what portion and what's in there from, from the start. Um, there was, if you could just touch on how that, that what you were talking about, those ad alternates again, and so that as we're not taking these things out, what will happen is during the course of this, if Parks gets together and is able to come up with funding for part of the trail, then the design feature for designing the trail will be added as an amendment to this contract, and it'll also be added as a budget amendment to the actual construction. So each one of these correct. pieces can come in play as this progresses, and that's how it's being managed, correct? That's correct. That's what we wanted to do. Any other questions for Gordon? A lot of questions I just went out of my head, though. Oh, now I remembered. Came back in? It came back right back in. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Gordon, a uh, question came up online uh, regarding the awarding of this contract to Welch Comer. But Welch Comer was the original bidder for the first phase or whatever you want to call it, and that was sent out to bid. That's, That's right. So the state code allows us to, as an as a ongoing phase, to award the contract to whoever had the, the first phase. Very good. Thank yes. you. Any other questions? I need to make a correction to, uh, after a quick consultation with our, our finance director, we won't amend the, our budget because we're going to direct bill uh, Ignite. So we won't be spending that through our budget. Our budget will stay the same. It's a little bit of a nuance, but I wanted to, after telling you that we were, I now need to retract that and say, as the bills come in, we, we don't pay them through us. We would pass those over. Everything but 400000 would go to Ignite. Just a minor point, but, a, but an important one. Ron, did you have something? Yeah, um, Gordon, uh, when, uh, when do you want to start on this project? And so when would you go out to bid? Yeah, great question. So we would plan on going out to bid uh, right now in March. So we would have a contract awarded in April, start construction late April, first part of May. Probably construct through the summer. I, in fact, let me segue on that to say my understanding, and let me see if I can come back to this, uh, if I can find it. Yeah, it's this one right here. Okay, so the concept for Mullen is, and the reason these two cul-de-sacs are in here, is that during the summer months, this road will be closed. So cars can come in, they can access this parking area, they can access here, but they won't be allowed to go through. There'll be bollards. This will be a pedestrian way that's, you know, unimpeded by vehicle traffic and encourage, you know, free flow of pedestrians. I, I mentioned that to say, so this is, this will happen every summer. Our project will also close it next year in order to facilitate construction. But again, it's in, in line with what's going to happen from now on with this project. So we'll start in a, probably April, May, and close the road until it's finished end of the summer. Any other questions for Gordon? Yes. This might be a question for Mr. Timeson then. Um, so if you're not going to amend the budget, then you have a million dollars in the budget for this project right now, and you're going to use 400000 of it for the design. So then... How do you move that other 600? So I, I can answer that. The other 600 is now 1.6 million, and it'll be direct build. We, we won't be writing checks to the contractor or the design uh, group. So I get a bill, an invoice, I give it to Ignite and say, here, pay this. It never comes through our budget at all. We won't be spending it. I Is that clear? think I got you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anything else? That sounds weird, though. <laughs> it's finance. It you know, weird. it's it's not it's, like engineering. It's, just, it's a 1.6 oh, no. instead of a 600,000 that'll just be built out, and it'll. <laughs> yeah. Just to, just hand ignite. Yeah, don't try this at home. The invoice. Yeah. yeah don't. You, you'll get another shot Explain at this. That to if, the IRS. <laughs> if I haven't explained it clear enough, because um, yes, we. It, hope to have that financing agreement to you um, at the December 15th or 16th council meeting. Is it, it, 
Go ahead, Ron. Uh, is there any leeway on the design? You know, you're talking about 400000 for the design. Well, it's a little less than that. A contract was, off the top of my head, $326,000. But I'm sorry, what, what was your, when you say leeway? No, the, the contract for design and construction admin, which is the one before you now, is 326000 The city has 400 of our own money, so obviously some will go to construction. And, well, in fact, we're splitting it as a ratio, the whole project, um, between Ignite and us because, and I'm sorry, can I... I, I may not have answered your question, but you bring up another important issue that... Uh, so, hold it, I need my glasses. All right, so this is the... I, I'm sorry, give me a minute to get my glasses on here. Okay, the Lake District boundary is right here. So LCD Ignite can't spend any money outside of this. So they've asked us to, and we are tracking that, to make sure that construction and design of all this is covered by our 400000 and not their $1.6 So that's part of our tracking. But you were asking about leeway in design. Yeah, you know, because uh, there's four, 400000 for the design, uh, is there any any way that uh, say that could be cut back a little bit? Because I mean, you know. So there's again, there's not four hundred thousand for design. The the total contract is three hundred and twenty six thousand dollars, and off the top of my head, I think one hundred and forty three of that was specifically for design. Your question about is there some leeway? The answer is with the design portion. It's lump sum because we've really defined already what the design needs to be. In fact, um, the storm, the drainage utility has already, they are a partner in this. They've already fronted the money for some of the field work. So Welch Comer is already ahead of the game and uh, got enough base plan down to have a really good idea of what they're headed for. That was reflected in the accuracy of their scope. So now back to your question of leeway. Well, where the leeway can come in is on the construction admin, that's really uh, part and parcel with the length of the contract, inspection, you know, construct contract services. So that's where the leeway comes in. It's time and material based on the length of the contract. So the quicker it gets done, the less money we spend on the back end. That's where the cost savings can come in. Okay. Thank you. you Woody. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move for passage of Resolution 15066, approval of professional services agreement with Welsh Comer and Associates for Mullen Road and Park Drive, design, bid, and construction phase services. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. The McEvers? Yes. Gukin? Yes. Adams? Yes. Edinger? Yes. Miller? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you very much, Gordon. Final item tonight is we have Council Bill number 15 1028. Vacation of temporary bicycle trail easement in the Riverstone Platte. This is pursuant to council action that was taken November 17th of 2015. So moved. We have a motion. We have a second. Second. Any further discussion? Renata, could you read the title, please? Council Bill 15 1028. An ordinance of the City of Coeur d'Alene vacating a temporary bicycle trail easement in the Riverstone Platte subdivision. Recorded in Book I of Platts, page 205E, Records of Kootenai County, generally described as a 15-foot wide temporary bicycle trail easement lying in part of Section 10 and 11, Township 50 North, Range 4 West, Boise Meridian, City of Coeur d'Alene, Kootenai County, Idaho, repealing all ordinances and parts of ordinances in conflict herewith, providing a severability clause, and providing for the publication of a summary of this ordinance and an effective date hereof. Move to spend rule. Oh, sorry. I'm moving to call, oh, please. <laughs> we voted, and that happens. My head fell off. Sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> hurry tonight, dear. What? 
Roll call, please. Thank you. McEvers. <laughs> oh, yes. Gookin. Yes. Adams. Yes. Ettinger. Yes. Miller. Yes. Move to suspend, suspend the rules. Motion <laughs> second. Okay, motion and yes. a second to suspend the rules. Any further discussion? Roll call. McEvers. Yes. Gookin. Yes. Adams. Yes. Ettinger. Yes. Miller. Yes. Motion carried. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned.